Okay, so uh, we will start. Uh, good morning to all, and uh, thank you very much to, for being here in our meeting. Uh, I take uh, a short five minutes to discuss who, are, who is and who are multipoint, and then, then we go to the, our friends from Silpat to show all of you the new our, our new service. So, multipoint. We are a cyber, uh, cyber knowledge uh, solution providers uh, to all the segments of information security. We are, for now, uh, we, are, uh, we, we are 12 years in the market. We are uh, branches in Israel, Greece, Malta, Romania, and uh, a few more countries in the way. And we touch uh, all the cybersecurity uh, uh, areas, uh, selling services like Decotic, uh, 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 Qualys, Tenable, and more and more and more. You will see in a few minutes the the presentation with some some of it's not working now. Wait a minute. No. Okay, for the webinar for now. We have, uh, as I uh, said before, four or five minutes about multipoint that uh, we, we do it now. And uh, in five minutes from now, we go to uh, Roy from uh, Silpat. And in the end of the of uh, uh, is Roy uh, explanations, we go to questions. And uh, of course, we'll be ready to receive our questions. So more and more things from your side to our emails after it, okay? Uh, as told before, Multipoint will lead the IT security uh, market with more and more uh, high level services. Uh, there is a short list of them, a, a bit of them. Uh, you can receive this uh, explanation and uh, more and more uh, description of all the services after it by mail. Uh, the second phase of, uh, of multipoint is uh, the strongest issues multicon that we have a, a technical team led by Jonathan and Ellie who can provide the PS, the installation, the training of all the services we sell all over. Right? Yeah. Right. So from our side, we can go on and go to Rui uh, presentation. Rui, you can go on. Okay, let me switch this on and uh, you can see my screen, correct? Okay, yes. so we can, yeah, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Rui Bernardino, I'm pre-sales for Silpa. And well, I'm here to show you the solution and um, talk a little bit about the, what is the need of about Silpa and what we aim to solve. Uh, but let me start with by presenting Silpath. Okay, so Silpath is um, a Spanish-based company. Um, it started um, around 13 years ago by, by developing some enhanced capabilities into an existing encryption solution. And But we went on and we are um, even more focused as we were before. So we, we are a DRM, a pure DRM company. Our only product is a DRM solution. And that's what we are talking about here today. Um, we are um, already, uh, we have already customers spread out around the world. So more than 20 countries. Uh, we are 100% channel oriented, meaning we don't deal directly with customers. We, we already, um, we always rely on our partners and our channel in order to, to develop our business and, and and move forward with projects. We also have a very strong focus on research and development. By being um, a relatively small vendor, our our focus in integrations and alliances with, with other with other vendors is of paramount importance to us. So we are we try to focus a lot and put a lot of effort into bringing new features and new capabilities to our product. We are some some customers also. I'm guessing some of them should sound uh, or at least look familiar. Um, but of course, we have many more uh, spread out around the world. Okay, so 
um, why do why do we invest in security? We we tend to talk a little bit about security and and talk about networks and computers and stuff like that. But in in the end, our concern is isn't with that. I mean, that's just hardware or software or whatever. We we our concern now, our company's concern is with the data. The, and the data that is the one that we need to protect. We are not concerned if someone takes away the, the laptop or, or a CIO laptop. We are concerned with the data that that CIO laptop contains. Of course, the laptop has its own value, but the value of the data that is inside that laptop, in many many times, it, it, it surpasses the, the the value of the laptop itself by. Thousands fold, right? So the, 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 our concern is with data. Let's have a look at some real examples. These are uh, publicly known examples. Of course, there are many more, but this is just a very simple example. Uh, so there was there's this scenario at Tesla where where a user that was unhappy with some uh, position change and ended up exfiltrating a large trove of of data of research and development information that was of paramount importance to Tesla. We all know that Tesla relies on lots of different patents and process and all that. So that was an exfiltration. This represents a, represented a huge loss for Tesla because that data cost a lot to create. And for, for a competitor, having access to this kind of data, the process to manufacture, say, like batteries and all that represents a huge, um, um, a huge value to, to Tesla. Some other example here, this is a slightly different one. This, this relates to Atom, the insurance company in US. They had a huge investment in security. And this is also some, something that is not uncommon in nowadays. So companies invest a lot in security. They invest a lot in, in services. They invest a lot in training and all that. And they, they, they think they have it covered. But then some other company that they need to share data with, some other, uh, I don't know, some other consulting that works within the company or that has access to the data, exfiltrated the data. And that was that, that is something that occurs and can occur with most of our companies. Sometimes we, we, we think that our policies are the, the only thing that we need uh, uh, in order to prevent data exfiltration, but then we need to rely on, on third parties and that's um, in many scenarios an issue. Mitsubishi Electric. This this is more of an hacking scenario where um, the company, the the, the network, uh, Mitsubishi Network, was uh, invaded by some hackers that ended up exfiltrating uh, also uh, large amounts of important data. Here, the same kind of scenarios. The, the, there was access to to internal information, and it was exfiltrated. Not all uh, exfiltration um, scenarios are, um, are are done by by with intention, right? And sometimes stuff happens accidentally, and this is a very common use case, right? Who here has not yet sent an email to the wrong recipient? Okay, because I mean Out Outlook that we most most people use auto completes the e the email addresses or outlook or gmail or whatever and in the end we end up sending the wrong uh, email to the wrong person Every, everyone went through this and in 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 some scenarios this can be serious okay uh, it happened to me i <laughs> in many, many more than once unfortunately and this is also the case here uh, that with uh, this department of navy in, in the us Okay, this is a very similar, and this is was was an intentional exfiltration with the aim to take profit from it, with Waymo. So that all, an employee take, takes out the information and ends up selling, um, selling, a, creating a new company with this new um, intellectual property, and selling this to Waymo. Again, with huge, huge loss to the to the company that was the victim of the exfiltration, and this uh, ended up in. Um, a potentially a huge loss for in this case for Google. Hold a second. Okay, so the loss here is also a value that we can't always estimate loss, but it, when we can, the figures are astronomic. And, and, and this also brings um, the team that, of course, when we invest in security, we need to protect by all the layers. It's not just a matter of investing into, I don't know, perimeter or applications or physical security. We also need to concern with data because data is the last resort in terms of protection. And we, we need to be aware of this. We, we cannot rely simply on perimeter. Perimeter is that, okay? There is 
the perimeter that we knew from cybersecurity like 20 years ago is, is that no longer exists. Companies cannot simply rely on firewalls in order to protect to, to protect their networks. Of course, they knew they do need to use firewalls to protect their network. I'm not saying that or trying to imply that firewalls aren't needed. What I mean is that it's not it's not the it's not the, the solution that covers it all, and that's something that we need to be aware. Of. And in the last resort, what we need to protect is the data, and this is our 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 where we work. Okay, this is our the kind of um layer that we are trying to address here in the protection okay here's some statistics around the, what are the most common um ways that data breaches occur we we see several several um of course we see the many, many incidents external attacks stuff like that but also this this is a very important figure so we saw that we can see that almost let's say half of the the, the exfiltrations ended up being with third parties Sometimes our companies or our customers don't really care too much about about protecting um, about their their, their vendor. They, they worry about policies themselves, but they they, they also need to concern with, with external and with external entities and third parties. And this is something that we we can also address with our solution. So this is a normal diagram nowadays, especially with with so many people working from 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 uh, home right because with this uh, pandemic thing and the network perimeter is now far from being what it used to be right so again we we, we go back to the firewalls and endpoint security and all those scenarios but those, those really don't apply when people are working from home or at least in many companies that were kind of pushed into this remote working scenario there was no time to take to take the cybersecurity into consideration. So, in many companies, the, the option was to simply um, allow access to the to their desktop computers on the company network via some kind of remote desktop or whatever. And this poses a huge security threat, right? It's, it's a risk, right? Because I mean, uh, the, the home computers are not really prepared, or I mean, in most scenarios, they are not ready to, or they are not compliant with any network policies or corporate policies. So in the end, what you get is, is computers that are used to for the kids to play Fortnite, also being used to access company essential data. And the, this is one of the issues that we are worried with today also many companies have already embraced the remote working a long time before this of course we need to provide access to the data and last but not least the cloud right so everyone is moving to the cloud everyone is putting data on the cloud they don't most companies or many companies don't want to care about servers on their premises and sending data to the cloud poses even uh, an additional threat on into the additional risk right Okay, so um, um, let, let's talk a little bit about ransomware because ransomware is also something that, something that we keep hearing on the news, right? And and this is something that we we we, don't, we I mean we don't cover the old, the old uh, attacks the old attack space of of uh, ransomware. Namely, we we don't we cannot prevent data from being encrypted. That's that's not it's simply not the the way we work. That's not how we we protect the data, but we can protect data from being exfiltrated. Okay, so if the if 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 an hacker goes in enters the accesses the data, the internal corporate information that contains, for example, say it um, in this case is personal information. Uh, we can still the data can still be protected. We cannot prevent it from being encrypted, but we can prevent it from from being exfiltrated, and that's what we we. That's, this is a, something that we see, I mean, almost weekly, on a weekly basis nowadays, ransomware is something that is going on. And uh, because the, the initial ransomware was, were based solely on encrypting the data and asking for a ransom in order to decrypt it, nowadays ransomware, at least um, that's my perception of it, is, is focusing more on, on demanding a ransom in order to not to exfiltrate the data, which, also, which is also an, a problem, right? Because I mean, how can you be sure that if you pay the ransom, they will not keep the data and exfiltrate it later? Nobody knows, right? So it's 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 something that is not easy to do. Let's have a, look, a little bit a look at um, what kind of um, 
securities that we um, measures that we can uh, that are currently available perimeter of course firewalls endpoint and stuff like that these prevent hackers from or at least that's the purpose of of them this prevent unauthorized accesses to the internal data and these are great okay they are there have been huge advancements in firewall security and we have excellent products in the market but still we have the remote workers right we have people that need to work from home people that are road warriors that travel a lot all these people need to access data. External entities, these entities, they need to access the data. Then you have classic approaches like encryption. But encryption, in most examples of encryption, uh, have all the same kind of fault, right? So suppose that a very simple example, I want to share with everyone, um, I don't know, a zip file with, with a password encryption. That's great, okay? It works great. The encryption in zip hasn't been broken yet. It's something that is, in terms of encryption, it's, it's usually safe, and that's perfectly okay. But what, what in the end, I need to share the zip file, which is okay. But, but then I need to share the password. And when I share the password, I, I don't know what the recipient of this password can do with the password. They can do everything. Also, they can do whatever they want with the zip. So in the end, it, it's only a method for for it's only a method for protecting data in when it moves around and in some scenarios when it is at rest right so it's not a safe mechanism also encryption as as has suffered historically from an incredible difficulty in 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 terms of usability right we we all heard about s mime pgp and those protocols really never got the the, the interest from the users, right? I, I've, I've, I, I mean, I had my first contact with PGP on more than twenty years ago, and it, it's a great technology in terms of encryption, and we know that it is safe, or at least kind of safe. But still, in the end, what you get it's something that is the users really don't like. That's what. That's why these kind of protocols are, are have not have not been ad adopted massively by, by the public. Also, the, the 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 issues around key management and all that make the, this all uh, encryption um, team a very complex matter. So it's not really being addressed as it should. Then we have classic technologies or emerging technologies like data loss prevention, and also CASB, which I kind of think of as the DLP for the cloud. But these are great solutions, okay? And we have integrations with those. Uh, don't get me wrong. We are, I'm not saying that any of these technologies is bad. No, that's not what I'm saying here. What I'm trying to say is that all these technologies have their shortcomings, have their limitations, and this is is a problem that we we face um, nowadays. Namely, with DLP. DLPs are great at, detect at detecting data. Um, you can have DLPs configured to use AI algorithms um, to have. Uh, I, I worked with this with this DLP that had something called. A exact data matching where you could upload the whole database for say customer records and the dlp would look for these ex exact same values within any kind of content and that's that's a great that's in huge power still dlps miss something whenever a file leaves the perimeter whenever the file goes out through some channel that is not controlled by the dlp there's no control control is lost. So as soon as a file leaves the premises, law control is lost. So the, the user, the recipients can do whatever they want. It's a similar scenario with Casby. Um, they are great with the, I say, SharePoint, Google Drive and Dropbox of this world. This world, of, they, are, they are great there, okay? They, they, they have incredible capabilities and like the DLPs, they can do a lot. But as soon as a file leaves that, that control perimeter, everything is lost right there is no control when the information leaves the perimeter okay okay and these are the main issues here so let's start by telling what is seal path and if if i if i were able to if i only got one slide to show this would be the slide that i show would show okay and i need to start moving a little bit faster okay so what is seal path so we, we start with any kind of data we we can protect any kind of files uh, or emails okay so there we are we don't have a limitation on what we do over the files 
then we apply strong encryption. And we, we are not, I'm not talking about our seal path encryption. We use a, 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 a kind of not, not industry standard, but we use an encryption that is also used by other companies, namely Microsoft, which we, where we base the, our encryption solution. So it's not something that we developed. It's something that is well known, peer reviewed. It has a um, FIPS certification. Is it FIPS or NIST? I'm not sure, but it, it is authorized for government use in US. So it's something that is peer reviewed and that you can be assured that it is a, a, a decent or at least audited uh, encryption technology. Uh, then we, to this encryption, we add remote control, the capability to be able to revoke access at any point in time. So if, if you send a document by mistake with someone else, you can rest assured that you can revoke access to anyone. If, if, if you share a document with a person that, that cannot, that we, to whom you did not give the permissions to print, for example, you can remotely give that person the, the possibility to print. And this is a huge power, right? You can do stuff with information that i mean it, it's something that that it's, it's sometimes i do demos and I, when i do the demos i share documents with with my prospect customers and when i do this and i share the protected files with them they feel like it's kind of magic right because i share a file with them they need to enter credentials to access it which is well okay no problem there but then I say, okay, try to close the file and not try to print it oh you cannot print it okay close it again and open it again now you can print it and this kind of remote power this kind of remote control is is huge the ability to be to be able to revoke access or change access to a file regardless where it is it's a huge power you are not relying on your computer your file servers your sharepoint accounts no the, the, the this file can be wherever it can be on my computer your computer or on a mobile in china it doesn't matter okay this is the kind of power that we grant uh, your your data also we provide the huge audit um, benefit. So you can know whoever accessed the data, whenever they accessed the data, and from what, where they accessed the data. This is important, and this is something that we need to, to be to know. So a little bit more about the details. We encrypt the data. We provide access control to this data. Who can do what? We prevent data leaks because data can be revoked or changed at any point in time. And we provide auditing uh, capabilities here. Okay. Okay. So before jumping off to the demo, uh, let's have a little, little look uh, of how, what we do and what kind of solutions we provide. So, okay. So we work with what we call protections, which are nothing more than circles of trust. So you can have a, you can create a protection that applies to finance documents. You can have a protection that applies to all company, let's say, for example, uh, internal classified, classified documents. You can have a protections that apply to customers, contractors, whatever, okay? We, the, the, there is the, the, the information within the company can be, I can say, uh, like, can be assigned the circle of trust and we work on that circle of trust. So we allow secret transfer, so the, the data can be trans transferred without any problems. You, you, you cannot, you don't need to be afraid of sharing data, protected data. That data is safe unless the user has access, has an authorized permission to access it, it won't be able to access it. So this allows secure sharing, which is, um, I mean, all our companies need to share, at some point, need to share data with external entities, and, and of course, this provides that that kind of secure sharing. I used to joke that you you can put your files on public website. It doesn't matter. Okay, if if the files are important or confidential or not, that's defined by the policy. Who has access to the files actually does not have access to the data, and this is something that we always try to emphasize. And this, of course, allows secure collaboration. For example, say, say a company wants to share something with an external um, entity, say lawyers or consultants or whatever, they can safely share those documents with this, these external entities without any concerns about what they will be able to do, okay? Okay, so how does it work? I'm going to show this. It's better to show than to talk, right? Uh, okay. So I stopped sharing my screen for some reason. I need to reshare it. And okay, hope you can see my screen. So 
I'm going, I, I need to speed this up because we are kind of running out of time, but le let me try to, first, let me tell you that this is my, I mean, this is my environment. I'm going to do, going to do everything live. Uh, I'm not in the videos business, um, but I'm going to show you the point of view of a end user. Okay. We are, we have many other points of view, namely, you can have a corporate point of view where you can create this kind of stuff from, from a different point, uh, a different perspective. Anyway, let's uh, work a little bit about this. This, this is the, the tool that the, the users that apply protections and define policies will get on their computers. So we call it SILPAS desktop. And we work, as I said, by circles of trust, which you call policies, right? So let's open this one, ARC project. It's just a mock project, doesn't really matter. Here we can specify whatever name makes sense or whatever. It's Actually, in the end, SILPAS doesn't care. Okay, this for us, this is a policy. Um, then we start here with assigning permissions. Permissions can work at multiple levels. Let, let me give you a quick example. For example, I'm going to add myself here into this policy. I start, I, I start by and typing my email. Um, I actually have my email on my address book, and this is automatically added, but this also can be integrated into Active Directory. The um, contacts can be shared. We can use groups from Active Directory, which leverage an enormous power into this because as people go in and out of the groups, they get the permissions or lose the permissions. So this is can be fully integrated into Active Directory. We can also use wildcards like this, right? We can say that anyone at a specific company has access to the data or actually the wildcard can be in other locations, but we, 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 we can have we can have multiple ways of assigning these, these rights to different people. But let's talk a little bit about the permissions, right? So here for Ruben Ardino, I can assign him view permissions, which is okay. That's the minimum permission, right? But then I, I can also say that the user can edit, meaning that the user can open the file, change it in any way and save it again, okay? It can even save it in, into another name, can even save it into some other formats. But with just this permission, the user cannot take out the protection. Okay, always the file will be saved with protection. Then I have print permission, which is kind of obvious, but also the ability to save to PDF. So this sometimes is an um, exfiltration vector that we need to be aware. That's why it is here on a separate dialog, right? Uh, the same applies to copy paste, which is obviously copy paste, but it also gives the users the ability to copy from a protected document into an unprotected document. So this is a kind of permission that you only assign if really needed. It's it's um, it, 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 because it allows exfiltration. Also copy paste in some applications limits the ability to share screen and track screenshots. So uh, namely in Office. So without this permission, I wouldn't be able to share the, the, the screen with you. Then we have this add users. Add users is something that we added here. And what I would do with this add users, if I assigned this to Rui Bernardino, I would delegate the possibility to add additional users to this policy with the same or less permissions that I, that I assigned to Rui Bernardino, okay? So in terms of um, delegation, this is one of the mechanisms that we have for, for, for policy uh, delegation. It can work, for example, if you, if you delegate to management corporate policies into specific uh, persons within some departments or whatever, it's it's one of the ways to do it, okay? So, and as soon as I add this this user here, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention the, the, the most important, <laughs> uh, I forgot to mention about full control. So full control, hold on a sec, let me have this nuisance. So full control is all of the above, but also the ability to take out the protection, okay? So full control is the highest uh, capability or, or IS permission that the user can get. And this makes it like a, the same as a owner of the information. So the, the, this is the only permission that effectively allows the users to unprotect. They can access even if the data has expired. It, it, they have full rights. They can do everything. They can save into unprotected format. They can do whatever they want. Okay. So as I was saying, when I had a user here, user group or a domain here into this policy, this will apply immediately. So if I would save this, this policy, all the data that was protected with this policy would be immediately available to Rubenardin with these permissions. Similarly, similarly, if I added this permission, say I will remove uh, the, the edit, the, all the permissions except edit, if, and if I save, of course, 
this would immediately, immediately affect all the documents that Rui Bernardino would be trying to access. I don't need to reprotect them again. This applies to all the documents that were already protected with this policy. I can also delete the user, of course, and this will revoke all accesses to the data. So this is, I'm just showing you how to edit, but you need to think what are the implications of editing this policy, and they are immediate, okay? Every, everything applies immediately. Here, I'll, I can also add, add some additional uh, information like expiration date. So I can say that some data is to expire on this given day. And at any point in time, as, as everything else, I can change this date. So if, if it is a document that needs to be accessed two weeks later, I just need to change the date and it will immediately be accessible. Even if it has expired already, it will immediately change. Of course, this allows online access um, in order for this real time to work. That, that It's a kind of magic, but not that kind of magic. Uh, so we can also um, allow access to offline. Ac access to offline allows some use case, like people are traveling or people are accessing from remote locations. Allow offline um, gives them the chance to access the data, even if they don't have connection to the, to the protection server, but still the um, um, but still, it, it works uh, because, I mean, you, you kind of lose the real-time response because if you allow offline, well, during the offline period, they won't need to check again for, for accessing the data. So it's um, some, it's a compromise that you get here. Also, I have uh, we can apply watermarks. We are not in the classification business, okay? We are in the protection business. And the watermarks that we apply actually do not reflect the the... The, it's not a classification mark or a disclaimer or whatever. It's more of a marking that shows who, who, who is the user accessing the data. Okay. I can also share this policy, namely here I share it with Andrew and with Anne. Here, actually, there are two very different use cases because Andrew has full control and Anne only has limited access to the data. So when I share this protection with them, I'm actually delegating to Andrew not just the possibility to apply the date, the protection, but also the possibility to change the protection, okay? So it's also a, me a delegation mechanism. Whereas with Anne, I'm just delegating the possibility to apply this protection, okay? Well, this was a crash course on, on how to create a policy. I'm sorry if I <laughs> went a little bit overboard here, but let's, let's have a look of how, how to protect, right? Okay, so I have a set of files here. Um, and again, we can protect any file. I just opted for these ones because they are they are easier to showcase here. So in order to protect the files, there there is a multitude of ways. I can simply drag and drop the folder here, and you can see that the files get this small SP icon, meaning that they are protected, right? I can with the same ease unprotect the files. I do need permissions in order to unprotect the files. And here, since I was the protector, I, I can do it whenever I want. I can also use right click. I'm, I mean, I'm not going to show you all the ways that we we apply the same the same poly, the same way, but we have multi, multiple ways of doing this. We also have plugins built in into Office. So if I want here, I can simply apply the same protection, ARC project. This will prompt me here, and there it is. Okay, so the protection was applied to this file, and it gets this yellow ribbon. Here on the yellow ribbon, I should I should have my my permissions, but here uh, as a as the owner of this protection, I can actually do more. I can simply change. I have all full permissions over this. Okay, so but the result is the same. You can see that the file was protected. Uh, you may wonder, okay, that's very nice. People apply protection, that's great. But we also have automatic mechanisms for protection. For example, if I have this file here, if I drag and drop this file into a, this specific folder, I can have a, what we call automated protection. So, and there it is, the file is now protected. Um, we have this mechanism, not just for end users, but also for file servers and cloud storage. So we, we, you, you can create policies corporate wide for, for these mechanisms. Okay, I need to speed this a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, I usually try to do these demos a little bit in a more um, simply, a more exhaustive way, but there is no time for that. Okay, so in order to open these files, we, we try to focus also on this. In order to open these files, I just the user just needs to double click on the file and it should open. With Office files, 
encryption is native to Office. This is something that we need to repeat every time, right? Encryption is native to Office, meaning I'm actually using Windows Office here, but I could open this file with Android Office, iOS Office, macOS Office, and those will open these files without any plugins. So it works out of the box, okay? You, you have Office on your, on your premise, you can start working, you can access these files. No need to use um, any plugins or install any plugins for Office files. Uh, the ones below try to focus on, well, here we need to install some kind of agent in most scenarios, but in, in the end, the, the result is that I, I use my own tools. For example, for PDF files, I'm using PDF DRM. You can see the secure here, meaning that it is protected. I'm a Foxit fan, but this would work the same with Adobe, Nitro, and any other um, PDF viewer. Okay, so I need to move forward. So I'm going to do a little trick here. I, I've been logged in as Mark Aldrin, and I'm going to switch to Ann Becker. Okay, so this is very nice for demos, at least, and I'm going to switch to Ann Becker. Within the policy, I assigned Ann Becker the permissions to view, edit, and copy paste. Okay, so let's have a look at this. First, I need to assure you something, okay, and, and you need to trust me on this. Uh, what I'm doing here is not relying on this being run on my, on my same environment. If I were on, on a virtual machine or if I were somewhere else, it doesn't matter. There's nothing looking into these files. So as, as a user, as N, I can copy this file here. No issues, okay? Silpath will not prevent me from copying the files. What Silpath can prevent me is from accessing the data or to do, doing whatever I want with this data. So very trying to move a little bit faster here. So when I double click on the file, the file immediately opens, right, with Office. That's the file, uh, you can see that the extension hasn't changed, so this opens natively with Office again. But I, we, we, I can see that they have the same, the same yellow ribbon, but here I can view my permissions. And you can see that my permissions as, as N are actually very different from the ones I had with Mark, right? I can view this file, I can edit this file, I can copy paste and I can save, but I cannot print, right? Okay, so I cannot print and print is completely disabled. So there's no way for me to print. You may be wondering, okay, yeah, but these are figures. I just need the number. I'll export this as a CSV, right? So I don't need the graphics. I can do graphics on my own. Okay, that's good. Let's try to do this. Okay, so I have this. Let me save it. This as my just figures or whatever. But when I try to save a CSV, you may notice here that I don't have the CSV format. Actually, all the formats that are here are also protected, okay? I cannot exfiltrate the data as in this way. So I cannot take out the protection. I, N does not have full control and then as, as such cannot take out the protection. But I am actually going to save it just to show you that the file is still encrypted, right? As, as it will any of the files that I do here. So if I copy this file one million times, all the files will be encrypted and all the files will be encrypted with the same permission, same policy that than the original file, the one that was the source for this. I can also very quickly show you what, what I meant by watermarks just now. So this is the watermark that we apply, okay? So in PDF files, you, you, I mean, this is not more than a deterrent in order to, to make users aware that, okay, if you take a photo of this, you need to be aware that your name will be there. I know it's not it's not an effective way against um, taking screenshots. We are all aware of that, but still it is a mechanism that adds something, some value. Uh, the original PDF files weren't changed. You saw me opening as, as Mark. As Mark, I don't get the watermark, only as N. Also relying the permission, um, on the permissions, you can see that the print button is disabled. So I cannot print. If I could print, yes, the watermarks would be there. But if, as it is, I cannot print with this user. Um, now I'm going to do a little trick and I'm going to show you something that is one of our new products and we are actually working on launching. So, okay. So in order not to confuse everyone, so here on the desktop, I'm still logged in as N, okay? But I'm going to open this other tool called Web Protector. So our desktop application is only available for Windows currently. So in order to provide uh, access to other platforms, we developed a very similar product 
but web-based, meaning it can be used on mobiles, can be used on Mac, can be used on Linux, can be used anywhere. And here I have the same the same capabilities that I have on the desktop. I'm just going to show you here because I this way I can do things without switching back back and forth user. Anyway, I can also ed edit the policy, of course, but let's move a little bit forward. Okay. So here on the documents, I can see as a user, regardless where I, uh, where I was, okay, so Mark accessing this browser can be anywhere in the world, not necessarily here on this, des this desktop. This does not rely on any plugin, by the way, in, in, in Firefox here. So here I can see the files, the accesses that were performed on the files. Let's have a look at this one, the Excel file, right? So here I know that it was protected and I know when it was accessed, right? Let's, let's do something here. Let's, for example, switch the permissions. If I, if I edit these permissions here, this will actually change the permissions for ARC. So say that I want to allow N, to pr uh, not N, but yeah, in this case, N, yes. I'm taking out edit permission and I'm giving N the print permission, okay? And I'm going to save this. But this was not this wasn't the Excel file I wanted to share with them. I'm going to lock it. Again, I asked you to imagine that this would be on a completely different computer, which is actually uh, it would work exactly the same. So I did two things in the browser. I changed the policy and I blocked the Excel file. Sorry, uh, on the wrong screen. But no, that this is a PowerPoint. Okay, so I have. Uh, presentation running on another screen. So this is the PowerPoint. And in the PowerPoint, you can see that the permissions actually changed. So here I don't have the edit permission anymore, but now I can print, right? You can see also that the disk icon has gone away and now that I have the print permission. Okay, so the policy was applied and this applies to all the files. You also remember that I blocked the Excel file, right? So when I block the Excel file, I revoked all accesses to not just to this file, but to all the copies that I did of this file. So, because they are actually the same, right? So any blocking that I did to this file would apply to all the files um, um, that are copies of the original file. Okay, so, um, I mean, of course I could un unrevoke the, the access to this data. I could do whatever, uh, let, let's, let me quickly move to a different aspect of SILPATH, which is the, um, administrative console. And again, I don't intend to have a crash course here. I just want to show some overall capabilities of the solution and I hope I get there. So um, I'm not con connecting as an admin and as an admin, I don't have just access to, to the files that were protected by Mark, but I have access to the files that were protected by anyone within, within the organization. And as before here, I have access to all the data relating to all the, the documents. So here I can see that and has just tried to open a board meeting. I can also have, I mean, I can list this by many parameters, but I also have something important. Like for example, here are the attempts that Anne tried to access the data, right? So any attempts to access the data are logged here. If it, if it failed, they are logged as an alert. I also have other information here. For example, I have the unprotect action that you saw me doing when I dragged the folder to unprotect. This is also audited. So even if a user has full control over some specific information item, this is audited and um, and any any changes and unprotection or whatever will be logged and into this. Um, of course, this, this kind of data is useful in order to, to I mean, create reports and all that. So we can, we can also export this data into a, a different uh, reporting uh, solution or integrate into a CM. So if you have ArcSight, Splunk or Curator or whatever, we can export this data um, in, into those kinds of solutions. I mean, I have some, I could show some reports here. I mean, that's quite a lot to show. Again, this, our purpose is not to have a crash course here on, on, on the solution, but I will quickly show you something. Okay. so. Here from, as an admin, I can create my corporate policies and I can manage, share with the users, but I can also edit the, the user protections. Namely, I can edit uh, Anne's prote um, sorry, Mark's protection. So I have here ASC project, the name is the same. You can see here that I can actually change the policy. So if I come here and take out edit and assign now print, um, remove print and, and take edit. If I save this, 
immediately. And sorry, again, the file has opened on the wrong window and you can see that the save icon is back and now the print is disabled. So as an admin, I can control my users um, data sharing and the, the policies. This is important also, of course, because nowadays many people are, well, simply COVID or whatever. So all the policies are available for the admins. Um, well, I'm not, I, I'll, well, this is the possible demo within time. Um, sorry if I went a little bit too fast here. Again, if you, if you would like to see more of this, please let us know and we'd be more than pleased to, to show you because we have much more to show. Um, but let's, let's talk a little bit about some further stuff here. So how does this work? You saw it. So protect any file, share it as you want, use your own tools. And we have, uh, we can provide track and control as a user or as an admin. Uh, I did not mention this, but we have, um, also a very strong, uh, comp or I mean, unique component regarding CAD solutions. Um, namely Inventor, AutoCAD, uh, SolidWorks, Katia, SolidEdge, and we have uh, DRM solutions also for this, also integrated with this product, okay. So I, I hope it, it's shown that we can use, it's an easy to use tool in terms of what the users are expected to do. I hope I showed that, that it is a product that easy to manage. I mean, I couldn't really show all the capabilities that we have on our console, but at least um, I tried to address some of them, right? And we we have a very, by being, by allowing the integration with Active Directories, I say it plural because we actually can integrate with multiple Active Directories for the same organization. And by allowing this, we get the, all the power from the groups, all the power from the existing user database and authentication and all that so it's a very strong mechanism in, in order to to allow users to, to to manage the policy to allow admins to manage the policies okay going a little bit into some more practical details so we have this solution offered as cloud or as on-premises okay both solutions have just about the same capabilities um there is some slight differences uh, namely in the way that we can integrate with uh, Active Directory. Both solutions can integrate with Active Directory, but there, there are some different components. Of course, our cloud, in order to integrate with uh, on-premises Active Directory, needs to be able to access it, and there's a component that we need to deploy, okay? Um, we also, um, uh, it's important that we when you show this uh, cloud offering, we are not offering a storage for documents, okay? So all the encryption that you saw, all the access to the files that you saw here were accessed from the, from were done on this computer that I'm running this software in. Okay, there was no file sent to the cloud in order to be protected. Okay, that's not the use case that we have here, and this never happens. We never store documents. We are not a document storing company. We do not uh, provide access to the files via our some link or whatever. That's not what we do. Okay, our all the protection. All, and most of the actions over the protected data will occur on, on, on premises on our computer, regardless if you go for on-premises or SaaS, okay? But if you go for, for SaaS, well, it, it's a much easier and simplified uh, deployment cycle because, I mean, we have it already. And this is actually what we try to always insist regarding POCs, right? We can do, of course, POCs on premises. That's perfectly okay, but it requires more effort and more time. And sometimes companies, well, they are not willing to spend uh, weeks trying to, I'm not weeks or at least some days in order to do, 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 do on, on premises deployment. Okay. So both options in both scenarios, there's no documents, there are no documents being stored within our premises. And it is something that is very important. Uh, and I need to insist here. Okay. There's, sorry, there's no document being, being, being uploaded to our, uh, and stored on our premises. Okay. Okay. Also, integrations okay we have integrations with lots of stuff i only cover the few okay actually i should have covered a little bit more uh but we we you can integrate with many solutions okay um we have some highlights here which i'm going to talk so i mentioned about ad integration and cloud storage we can integrate with box google drive and office 365 the integration we have with office 365 is actually substantial so because we can allow editing of uh, protected files online, like we, you do nowadays with Office Online. 
and we can also have automated protection in 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 office 365 so you can specify that the specific folder that is to be shared with some vendor or some partner or some consultant is to be applied this policy and you can say this and it stays there and automatically anything that gets dropped or edited there will be automatically protected okay also the ability to see to to edit encrypted files is very important many companies are moving for full cloud and this is a way to do it you can have online editing of the files uh, and transparently okay we also integrate with DLP. So after, you may wonder why I've, I've been, well, not exactly um, complementing uh, DLP, but we can complement the DLP on, on what they do. So DLPs are great at detecting data and um, detecting infiltration, and we provide them the DLPs and also Exchange Server. Actually, the mechanism is very similar. We can provide mechanisms to apply um, protection automatically. As I mentioned before, we integrate with SIMS. We use a very simple uh, mechanism here, so it can the data can be correlated by SIMS. Um, and for example, if you want to have an um, alarm, if a user tries to unprotect 1,000 files when connecting from China, okay, that's a very simple thing to do with a SIM. We also can integrate with classification solutions. Here we have Titus and Bolden James, which are actually nowadays the same company. But we, we can integrate with classification in a way that that the policy can determine that if something is classified as internal, then you should apply a protection that enforces those 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 that classification. Okay, classification is, is, a, is classification is a very important um, subject. Um, but it, it, classification per se lacks the capability to enforce the policy. So it's very nice that you have a policy that says that confidential should be only be should only be accessed by person A, B, and C. But here you, with Silk Path, you can say that if something is classified with confidential, it is apply the policy for confidential, and this means that only A, B, C will be able to access it. Okay, and that's it. Um, also, we have integration with file servers, NAS, um, SharePoints, and other ECMs. So you, you can have automated protection. You don't need to rely on explicit manual protection by the end users. And well, that's about it. Okay. So uh, just to finish the, the, my last slide. So in the end, what we, we provide is this new management for the information lifecycle. You can protect, you can audit, and you can automate um, the protection of data and keep your data safe. You don't need to worry. Um, I mean, you can apply policies. And this is one of the things that we always try to emphasize is if you try to do a DLP deployment project, and I'm guessing that some of you already did, DLPs are, uh, DLPs, CASBs or whatever, are, are complex solutions. They sometimes require lots of resources. They require lots of policies and working on policies. They are all great, but it, it, it takes a lot of effort. Seal path can be a quick win. You can protect the data and be immediately uh, get results immediately because as soon as you do the protection, like you saw here on, on the demo, you immediately get results. Okay, all you, that you saw here was done live on, on our environment. So this is something that you can start doing tomorrow if you want. Okay, so um, just about in time. So are there any questions relating to this? Okay, so I have a couple of few. Okay, so I'm going to pick up on, on some on some of the questions. I have a question about uh, Microsoft documents or all kinds of documents. So, okay, we can protect any kind of documents, um, any kind of files actually. Okay, so, and, and also emails actually, I did not show the email use case. Okay, um, but we can protect any kind of files. Uh, one in what relates to Microsoft Office, the, the advantage is that Microsoft Office is built in natively into Microsoft Office, whereas the other formats, you need to install some kind of agent in order to handle. Say, for example, a text file, right? There is no provision for DRM on a text file, it's just a text file. So we can protect text files, but you are required a plugin in order to access it. Okay, so external users, that's actually a very important thing that I should have mentioned. So. When when a, when a user say here Mark Alden okay is adding a is adding users to to a policy the system automatically checks if the user is known or not actually this behavior can be fine tuned but in the end if I do something like this Rui Bernardino and if I add Rui Bernardino 
view permissions like I did just now I mean, very quickly. Uh, the system will check is is Rubernardino known by the system? If it's not, then the system again this is the default behavior. Okay, this can be fine tuned. Then the system will automatically send an email to Rubernardino. Okay, and this is auto provisioning like we have in many cloud solutions. So, if a company wants to rely on this automated mechanism for the for the external users to be provisioned it's available out of the box. So the users simply click, need to click on the link and that's it, set the password and that's it, okay? Also, the external users can be managed by the admins only or just for a few people. So we also have mechanisms here for external users. Uh, regarding authentication, for external users, we, we, we only rely on, um, normally we only rely on, on accesses um, using our database so the password is stored on the database but we are working on open id integration so that we have all the power with open id regarding internal users um, we normally go with active directory and with active directory we get kerberos adfs and also of course plain authentication um, but there are other there are other ways okay i have a question about video um sorry uh yeah we can encrypt any kind of file okay the the limitation with video is because the, we don't have a specific plugin for video we cannot control the permissions uh i mean if the user can gets to view the file and then opens uh, say adobe premiere or whatever the user will get full access to the data but unless the user has any kind of if the user does not have any kind of permissions the data is protected uh, the the user requires, I mean, it requires at least view permission in order to access the data. So yes, it works with video, but in the end, the users always get kind of full control over the data. That's that's the, the, the limitation. Okay, so I have some question about the LPN till path. Uh, I don't know if if I covered this already, but the, the scenario here is very simple. So uh, I mean, suppose that you want a policy, you have a policy with DLP that. And if anything that is uh, sent to say Gmail needs to be protected, if, if it matches some criteria, you can do that with, with Zilpath, okay? Or if you find the um, encrypted, if you find some a document with 2000 uh, credit card numbers, the DLP can automatically protect that file and that, that's how it works, okay? Uh, can Zilpath help me with files particularly downloaded and being unreadable? Could yeah, no. We have many questions. <laughs> um, I don't know if you want to. Yes, I guess I have uh, also a few questions, but uh, I, I think we're uh, we're finishing in our time. And, yes, exactly. Uh, Sorry be, for this. We will be very very happy to receive uh, more and more questions and keep uh, dealing with the the, the potential uh, customers or uh, or partners here. Uh, so first of all, thank you very very much for your time. It was very deep, deep, uh, deep, interesting, and uh, we're waiting for uh, for more more and more questions. And we follow for you to you and uh, wait for your response. So thank you all of you, and uh, see you in uh, our next uh, 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 webinars. Thank you very thank much. You. I hope to hear back from you. you. Okay, have a great day. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys.